bring you another vlog of a how-to series. This one is going to be five tips to help you overcome performance anxiety. Enjoy! Alright, tip number one, take classes or lessons, maybe both, because during those lessons you're going to gain the technical skills that you need to do whatever it is that you're doing. So, um, for instance, it's not necessarily like in the box. For instance, I was taking music business classes and that gave me a no, new level of confidence that I didn't have before. Now I feel like I can go in there and I can negotiate with somebody and say, okay, this is what, um, this is what I charge, this is what accommodations, blah blah blah, I can go in there and I can say this, 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 and this because I know that I have, the, I've learned the skills I need to do the business side of that thing, but I've also learned the skills I need to be able to be at a point where I know that I am worth whatever it is that I'm negotiating. So it's kind of a two-sided thing. So there's kind of like the outside business most people wouldn't think about that but there's also the lessons of the technical skills the technical skills that I've learned have taken me so far they have boosted my confidence they've helped me work through a lot of emotional things I don't know if that goes for every business whatever business you're doing or if it's because it's kind of more on the art side and it just deals with emotions but I've worked through so much and through these lessons and being firm in these technical skills, I have the confidence to go up there and know that I what I'm going to sing is going to come out the way that I want it to. So, classes and lessons is tip number one. Tip number two, a lot of practice. If you go up there and you have had lots of practice then you will go up there saying, okay, I have this memorized, I've done this a million times, I've performed this for myself a million times, if I did it for myself, I can do it in front of other people, I have this down pat, I can nail it. If you go up there with all of that being taken care of, then you're not going to get up there going, okay, what's this note supposed to be, I'm not really sure and then you kind of get in the area but you're not really sure if you hit it or not there's not going to be any of that guesswork because you're going to have practiced so much you're already going to know and you will have taken those classes so you're already going to know that you're going to do exactly what you set out to do tip number three it's kind of along the same lines as the first and the second one Whatever you have learned in your classes or your lessons, rely on that. Just know that whatever it is that you learned, that's what's going to come out. If that's what you've been practicing, that's what's going to come out. Just lean on that. Because what happens is <laughs> sometimes you get on stage and you sound very different through the microphone than you think that your actual voice sounds like. And so if you don't just rely on those technical skills in those moments, then everything's kind of shaky, everything, you, people notice that, is she really sure what she's doing? I don't think she is. Um, but if you just rely on that technical skill and say, okay, no, I have this down pat, I've done all this practicing, and I've done all these lessons, and... I know how to raise my soft palette to get the sound in the right place, to get the projection that I want, to make it sound exactly like this. Whatever it is, just rely on the fact that you know what you're doing. So when you do go up there, you're not going to be in that place of, I'm not sure if I did this right or not, if it sounds differently, because it probably will sound differently through the monitor than it will whatever you're doing and maybe you're not a singer or maybe you're not a musician but it's these types of these tips still apply so tip number four in overcoming performance anxiety is just keep in mind if you make a little mistake 
people aren't going to notice. You're going to beat yourself up over it and no one will have a clue that you even did it. I have been, and I'm saying these things because I've been through all of them. I've been at a point where I wasn't sure. I got up on stage and you could tell that I wasn't sure. I've been at a point where I was sure. I got up on stage. I sounded very differently in the monitor, but everything came out as planned and it sounded great and I had so many compliments because I was relying on those techniques. I've been in a place where it was like, all right, um... I've been in a place where it's like, alright, no one's going to want to listen to me, no one's going to pay attention to me, everybody's going to think this is horrible, I do one little note wrong and everything's over, and, um, believed it, <laughs> and that's not a good place to be because then you kind of go down the spiral path into Never Never Land, and it's not a good place. But if you keep in mind, okay, I messed up that one little note, then, and it's no big deal because even if people noticed they don't care, the majority of them aren't going to care. There might be a few trolls, whatever, just shrug it off and move on. Um, but <laughs> what happens is you get up there, you sing this beautiful song, you messed up one little note in the beginning or one little note in the middle or whatever, and you're the only one that noticed because everybody else is sitting there going, that was amazing, that sounded great, and you're awesome. And you sit there and afterwards you're like, what? What just happened? Okay, awesome, cool. But if you let that one little note get to you, you're like, okay, I miss this one little note, it's horrible the song's terrible now, and then it starts to mess with your head and you start to go down a path and the song does start to get worse and worse. So just remember, don't sweat the small things because no one noticed anyway. My fifth and final tip is so important, it's something that I have to remind myself even when I'm practicing, is let go, just have fun, and remember to breathe. <laughs> If you let go and have fun, people are going to notice. Even the most terrible singers out there who try to perform, if they let go and have fun, people are drawn to that because they're like, oh, they're having fun with whatever they're doing. I want to take part in it. I want to join in. I want to have fun too. So if you just have fun with whatever it is that you're doing, people are going to notice and they're going to want to hop in. <laughs> and the most important thing that you can ever tell yourself is breathe because especially if you're a singer because breathing techniques are everything and <laughs> you know if you get really tense and you just breathe <sighs> remember to breathe the, ten the tension starts to go away and it's just a little tip <laughs> you know because sometimes we like hold that breath in and everything tightens up and we're like and then nothing goes well but if we just breathe, everything goes well, our muscles are loose, er, anyway, and we can actually do what we set out to do. So I'm going to cover the five tips again. The first one, first one, take lessons and or classes. The second one, the second tip is lots of practice. The third tip, rely on the skills that you know that you have. The fourth tip, don't sweat the small things because no one noticed. And the fifth tip. And the fifth tip, let go, just have fun, and remember to breathe. Alright guys, I hope you found these tips on overcoming performance anxiety helpful. If you did, leave a comment below and let me know what questions you have, what you're struggling with that I can help you with, or maybe somebody else that is a fan can help you with. Um, if I don't know the answer, if you have suggestions on how to improve these videos, whatever it is, comment below because I want to connect with you. I want to talk to you. Let's be friends. All right. I love you guys so much. And as always, dream big.